He turned up at my coffee shop in a car. Did I have a cap And asked for an Earl Grey tea and I was making the drinks and I was like, who's this boring bastard? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're driving a G-Wagon to charges. <laughs> Celebrate for five minutes, but now, Switch back and on. That That's something we probably have to, to learn as well. Captain. But when there's 28 staff hugging each other yeah. and the, the bus driver and the chef are joining, you're going, yeah, hold on a second. Right, you down. Down. Have that <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting emotional from? Yeah. It's just no, a, truthfully. A cup. Are you drunk? It just brings you back. How <laughs> <laughs> did you get emotional? Add a few Peronis that night. All right. Yeah. yeah. 15. <laughs> <laughs> start two, bench one. Drop one. Oh, Jesus, God. that's really good. I'll have to start, Roy, because I'm so scared of it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Stick to Football, brought to you by Skybet. And this is a programme that we've been working on now for many, many, many months. And we're so excited that it's finally here and that you can watch it. I've done a little bit of a Todd Bowley. We've brought in Roy Keane, Jill Scott, Jamie Carragher and Ian Wright. Right, well, it's taken some time to bring you lot together. Hmm. Jill, your lawyer was hard work. Lawyer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even have a lawyer. Well, you do. You, you, you don't even know it. <laughs> Roy, six months of torture. Up and down, negotiating. <laughs> right, ignore me for two months. I did go. And a bit of money, so you were yeah. straight in. <laughs> <laughs> straight in. But, Roy, I always start off with you, because I always think that you've been for a walk with that dog of yours this morning, that with beauty. that dog? That's that beauty. Yeah. Jet and Jet. Riding, man. Jet, I'm riding, Jet. Jet. Yeah, with Jet. And have you a row? No, not a row. But I, I have disagreements with people who don't pick up their, uh, mm. their dog poo. So there was a bit of an incident this morning, but all was quite calm. <laughs> and the woman just didn't see her dog having a poo and I reminded her that you've got to keep an eye out. You, you're like on poo watch. <laughs> but it was okay, it was quite, it was quite relaxed. How'd you put, mm. did you get a poo back? Yeah, I don't. Uh, no. Just, yeah. no. No, I don't no. like the warmth. You're not a dog man? <laughs> I don't like <laughs> cat man. <laughs> the warmth? Cat man, no. Cats? Because I'm, I'm allergic to them, really. I've always been allergic to them. Um, but like now my girls and that, they wanted them, so we just got two lovely little cats. I love them yeah, so no. much. I'm not joking. It's just like all of a sudden, you know, I mean, just got Did they give you much back, though? Did they give you... I don't want much back from them. That's the thing. You know what I mean? With the I mean, dogs, you know, the dog just yeah. comes up to you and he's just, oh, I love you, whatever you do to me. A cat just looks at you, walks away, puts its tail up and says, look at my ass or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not bothered about you. Jill, you've been doing League of Their Own recently. Yes. How's that been? Yeah, the banter's actually quite vicious, to be honest, so I've had to stick up for myself, so I'm ready for you In guys what way? today. Yeah. Give us no, all your safe, your safe Just you have to be ready. I had Jimmy Carr on my team and he came at us a few times, so yeah. With what? I had to get him what back did he say? Tax jokes and stuff like that. In <laughs> <laughs> hairline and stuff you like that. You could be getting sued now, you need that lawyer now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've got one now. <laughs> but no, it's been good fun, really good fun. Why was he brutal, was he? Uh, it's just kind of the banter on there. I suppose you spend your whole life as a footballer or maybe not you, Roy, but being careful what you see in interviews and stuff like that. <laughs> Whereas... Where's that come from? <laughs> but the gloves are off, like, you can literally see anything. So it's like changing room banter, that's how I'd kind of describe it. So Did you, you make might... you uncomfortable? Uh, no, not really, because I can have that side to me, but obviously not when there's a lot of TV cameras, so I right. think people might see a different side. To Jill, this series, which I'm a bit worried. Well, you're about. a pundit now. You've got to go for it. Haven't I know. You? Well, my grandma's going. What's this show you do? And I'm like, oh no, you don't. You don't need to know about that. Well, you've upset Jordan Anderson as well, haven't oh, you? Don't say that. <laughs> I'm so bad about that. But how do you get over it when you're constantly upsetting people like you used to? He's it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, you get over it. You're fine. Really? That'll <laughs> yeah, be all right. Yeah. You upset uh, Aaron Ramsdale's? Yeah, I've got him on my case at the moment. There'll That's be someone else tomorrow, don't worry about it, once this goes out. Right, well, let's get on to football. And the, the big story in the last 24, 48 hours has been about Jaden Sancho. And I'm a little bit torn on this one because I think that it's really important to have discipline, obviously, and control if you're a manager in a dressing room. But also, I, what just is niggling me a little bit is that he was only six months ago allowed to have two or three months off with mental health issues. And then, obviously, now he's got this very public spat where the manager's come out and so he's not training well. Sancho's gone back now. Eric Ten Hag's demanding an apology, and obviously Sancho's not forgiving. Have you ever been in a situation, Roy, where you, as a manager, if you like, kick to play at all? I mean, the reports now are that he's training with the academy, he's eating with the academy. Has that ever happened to you as a, as a, as a manager? No, not, not to that level, but you've obviously you'd have issues with players, discipline, etc. But I've never banished a player to go and train with the reserves or whatever. But obviously every story is different. Because it's Man United, everyone's looking for him to maybe make a mistake. I've never had that experience where I've banished a player and he doesn't train with the first team. You know, you, you know what I was going to say with it? Listen, I, you know, we've seen Jadon Sancho and his performances up to this point and I think he'll be one of the first to say, you know what, he hasn't done what I think everybody's expecting him to do up to this point at United. 
And that is something that you have to take that critique on board. But one of the things that I look at with him, which is something that was quite, um, something that happened to me a lot in my career is that they came from my personality. Oh, he doesn't smile. He's very withdrawn. You know, kind of casting that aspersion on you when I don't think that's got much to do with anything. Yeah. That's one of the things that when I look at it, I feel for him because I know what he's probably going through. But at the same time, all that does, it just kind of feeds into, oh yeah, he's got an attitude problem. You know, I've played with players with attitude problems, but they're still working and still doing their stuff. I don't think that he's somebody that's not doing his training, not working. No, I don't. No, I don't think he's training like, properly, right? But why, that's my issue. I have no issue with his exactly. personality. I, don't I have no issue with his... Why, about, why bring that into it? Why people... That's what I'm read, reading, James. Yeah. What I'm reading is, oh, he doesn't smile much. Oh, he's very withdrawn. He's, I'm not bothered about like that, right? I'm not bothered about that. But if I hear... The one thing I don't really forgive a player for, we work with players who come in and they can be grumpy or whatever, but when, when they're training, they're training properly. Mm. So my annoyance would be Sancho would be if he's not training properly, whatever about his personality, mm. we're all different. I'm with the manager on this one. And, I, and normally in these situations, we don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes, but I'm normally with the manager on this one. And you, you think of Ten Hag and where he's got to get to, and we rave about Klopp in these situations, or Pep Guardiola only a few months ago. Cancelo, who, who were thinking is a great player for him, he's just like, oh, he's gone and he, he, he's sold. now. They just deal with those situations. We say, oh, he's strong management. He's very ruthless. You've had Alex Ferguson, George Graham, mm -hmm. these type of managers. Ten Hag almost can't afford to lose this fight. And do you want it to become a fight? No, but he's after an apology from Looks the player. Looks like he's made but it. If he's not, well, maybe he's put himself in that position mm -hmm. now, but he's come out and he said something. I don't think it's massive, what he's actually said in a press conference after the game. He's been asked a question why Sancho's not in the squad. <laughs> he hasn't trained, right? And massive. if that is the case... I think if you get accused of not training well mm -hmm. and you're not working hard not as a football saying, player, that's probably the worst... But you're not, okay, but what I'm saying is... But never, give what a man the... a chance, never give a man a chance to say that about you. Exactly. And if he's not playing well for United since he's come to the club, Listen, if, he, if you're not training properly, you're not, he's not going to play well. You've got to train Did the manager properly. need to even say it? Mm. Did, I, did, I was the managers say under... that. If well, you think, if you have a good changing room or a good dressing room, do you just sort it out in there and it doesn't even... Well, you never get the manager. chance to... I'm, 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 I'd I'm, be embarrassed, I'm... I'd be ashamed of my life if a manager ever came out and said to me, about, and even spoke through the media, oh, you get over that stuff with the media. People said, oh, you're, you can't say anything about players through the media. Yeah, you can. You can send messages out to people because... I'm sick, I'm sick of it. Side. Player, we're obsessed with it. You can't upset the player. You can't do this, you can't do that. When Is he? Would anyone ever say to you, you weren't saying? No one's ever said that to me, about me. It, when did you see it successfully work in your careers where a manager came out and criticised the player publicly? To that level, it usually is the end, isn't it? You'd accept mm. it's the well, end. That's not good. Yeah, when, of course. Yeah. when you say to that level, you got asked a question why Jaden Sancho wasn't in the squad. He hasn't trained. He hasn't been training right lately, so he's not in the squad at the moment. That was it. I don't but think. Back it's in our, right. Yeah, but our time, Jane, um, and it's something that I try to stay away from going back into into our time. It's different because then you, you just you, you buckle down and get on with it. But we, there's a lot of talk about mental issues all the time now. We, we have to deal with that, and the fact with with some players now in this current climate. It's a different, it's a different, we're in a different place. I get that, but then Eric Ten Hag, is, 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 as a manager, and we, we talk about other managers dealing with these situations, dealing with players, being really ruthless, making a strong decision, and having discipline right throughout the club, and we praise them for it. And now Eric Ten Hag, because he's going through a little bit of a difficult spell, Man United are probably doing as well right now, haven't started the season well, you go, oh, he's going to lose the dressing room, he's going to lose the player, all these type of things. But if he was winning, we'd say, oh, ruthless, great, he's dealt with a situation, he sent a message to the dressing room. Mm. I'm always with the managers on this. I'm, I'm sick of players and, and people coming out around them. Oh, you can't say this, you can't say that. It's not even heavy criticism. Has he been training right? The lads in the dressing room will know. He's not going to say that if he has been training right. And yeah, that James, they, get the, that. they get the numbers every day. Sports science, uh, how much they, they cover, what they do. We all know he hasn't, he hasn't lit the... Lit, yeah, but we're not only a few months before, James. He, he's, he's protecting him. He's taking him out of it. Protect so that's great management. He's done that. He's looked after him. So then come out Gotta six months back, later and then say right. that. I'm like, come on, just get on with it, mm. take it. You haven't done much at Old Trafford. Have you been training right? Look at yourself, go and prove him wrong, go and some, put some performances on the pitch. He's been, he's, let, let's be honest about it, mm. he's been awful. Yeah. He's been really, really poor considering how much he cost and he come with you know, a reputation. He's done nothing for Man United. Do you think it's the attitude in training around the lads as well? Like you can get the numbers and the data, but you know, if they're just not tracking back or they're just not putting a shift in, do you think the lads are frustrated as well? Or do you think it is <coughs> just kind of the argue, like the arguments and stuff like that. You'd hope the dress room would sort that out. That's well, ideally. I, I think if a player's yeah. dragging his heels in training, we've all worked with players who've maybe had moments or weeks or months where it just, 
they might be thinking of a move or they're coming back from injury. They might be struggling, but a good, strong team would, wouldn't tolerate that. Yeah. Wouldn't tolerate a player slacking off. It would seem, though, where we are now today, to throw it forward, he, Eric Ten Hag saying to Jane Sancho, if he's, he can't come back and train with the first team until you say sorry. So if he comes back now, next week, and says sorry, does that mean everything's all right? It can, surely Probably it not. No, I think that's a That's for the tweet, well. isn't it? Is that the tweet? The, yeah, the, the tweet. Yeah. The tweet, the tweet that Jaden puts out after the response to Ten Hag and he's asking for an apology for that. The only thing I would say to Jaden in this situation is, say so, get yourself back Maybe amongst the first team. Yeah, yeah, Show yeah. another side to him. That's so what you've got to do. So some, something's marks, got to give, isn't it? Somewhere. You've got question marks over this player, and you're listening, he's, training, he's not training properly at it. And he does turn on and shows some sort of humility and go, do you know what, maybe I got it wrong. I think you can move on very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can. We've, we've been in dressing rooms where players have made mistakes and they come in and they do say, sorry, lad, you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's forgotten about very, football dressing rooms are a strange dynamic. Mm. If players show that they care and, they, they, again, they're human, you go, that's fine. Move on very, very yeah. quickly. And we've all said sorry when we don't mean it. I had to apologise to a man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not said sorry in 53 years. 51 no, years. I had to apologise to a manager once and it was through gritted teeth, but I was like, look, they're the manager at the end of the day. I had my say, they came back at me and then I think it's got to be the is a position. Yeah. No, we just had a bit of an argument over, I thought the girls needed an extra day off or something like that and then they came back player at me. Power, you mean. But then, oh, no, I was, I was a clear <laughs> coach. It's funny you? because like, with George Graham, I remember me and George Graham used to have blasting arguments in front of the lads. And it's really strange because I used to say some real, I said some, some, not some nice things. I didn't say nice You're things. You were horrible as a player, were you? I was quite horrible, you know what I mean? It was quite horrible and I said some, but you know the thing with George Graham, he called me in on the Monday and, you know, he said, listen, you're, you're going to have to apologise in front of the guys for what you said to me there and that. What and I must, say to him? I can't say what I said oh. to him. I called him. <laughs> He's I told me. It's really, really bad. <laughs> so, I can't say, but the thing, the thing is, is that what I said to him and I look back now and obviously I play golf with you, we get on very well, love him so much. And we laugh about it now, but some of the things I said to him, which he just accepted an apology for, is something that I look back and I say, I was very lucky that he's mm. that kind of guy. I remember he left Paul Davis out for 18 months and only brought him back for four games. And they were at the semi-final of the League Cup, semi-final of the semi-final of the uh, FA Cup, final and the, in the two finals. And he had a grudge against him, but then when he needed him, he brought him back in. George Graham could cut that off. This is why I'm saying with the sorry, if it means you say sorry, and you have to mean it, obviously, and you're back in, you've got uh, to be back in. Yeah, I had that a couple of times where I, I had to apologise in front of the dressing room. Uh, I had to well, nearly come to a fight on the pitch with, with my own teammates. Mm. So I had to sort of go in, apologise after the game, but you, you're not in that. Who was it? Ah, below it. Mm. Uh, Sp Spanish right back, he was going forward too much. I was like, I need, I, I need a protection. <laughs> So we nearly come to blows on the pitch. <laughs> then after the game, you think, oh, it was a bit much that. But I tried to apologise after the game. So I thought, oh, and he, he you know, threw his hands. So you start, you lose your head again a little bit, don't you? And then, but the next day, the manager's like, no, you've got to apologise in front of all the team. And sometimes you just got to say, sorry, is that it? Mm. And you just move on, forget move it. On. And as you said, sometimes you might fully believe in it. But at the end of the day, he's the manager, he's yeah. your boss. Do and if that. he doesn't come across Sancho and, and, and say sorry, yeah. what's he going to do? Just stay in the reserves. Exactly. You want to get your Manchester United career going. And if it all it takes is to just shake the fella's hand, say sorry, let's move on, forget about it. It's, it's, it's no big deal. That, it? Sorry seems to be the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> you write the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, did you ever say sorry to anyone at any point during your career? Yeah. Wife. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think I've ever done anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. In the dressing room or training or... Maybe when I've sent off. Maybe I must have said sorry, lads. You should say dressing. sorry to me, Roy, for saying to me that I've got a, a, a trophy cabinet full of losers' medals. <laughs> well, that's the truth. <laughs> at the time. Hey, at the time. At the time. Well, I must have said sorry in the dressing room after if I'd been sent off. I, I definitely would have apologised. And I have no problem, jokes aside, if I've done something wrong, apologising, mm. absolutely no yeah. problem. Just in, just in terms of a, as a coach, did you ever in, end up in a situation with a player like Sancho oh, where you banished them? Yeah, a few. No, no, not more banished them, but I fell out with lads when I was obviously when I was with a, obviously manager Sunderland, uh, Ipswich when I was working with Martin with Ireland, and I look back and I analyse it, and I was convinced, and I still am that I was right. <laughs> no, I was. The, the, the lads I would fall out with were yeah. complete like idiots who never done nothing with their careers or their lives afterwards. So that gives me a bit of comfort. <laughs> Nobody's ever really proved me wrong on that side of it. But I, I think uh, I have put players in. But honestly, you'd have discussions and arguments, but usually the players...
players, listen, players can be wrong as well, obviously. We talk about leadership and you said a good change room would sort this out and I think it absolutely would because mm. I think the captain, the senior players would bring Sancho in, they'd sit, sit him yeah. down and they'd say, come on, let's get to a conclusion here, we can't have this dragging on. We know what leadership was 15 years ago. What is leadership today? You've just alluded to it. It is different today mm -hmm. than it would be back then. What is leadership in a dressing room for you, Roy? Action, Gary. Action. What you do on the training pitch, how you lead yourself on the training ground, how you speak to staff, how you speak to your teammates, without, no, you obviously follow up with them, you mm -hmm. challenge people. Leadership is about action. The training's key for me, it's how you train. Again, I've, I find it very hard to have a conversation about a player who doesn't train properly. I just cannot yeah. understand it. I can't. I'm just kind of not even up for that type of debate. Normally, the captain's one of the best players. Mm. Normally, he's one of the, you know, the top men in the dressing room. And I think for the... Yeah, <laughs> I think for... Like, I, never got it. Yeah. <laughs> I think for, for the manager, that connection between the two, and almost... Yeah, the manager be battered on players day in, day out. This is what you've got to do. You've got to do that. But if you're captain, you know, your senior players are sort of setting that example without having to be mm. told. And how can, if you, if, you, if you come into a Liverpool dressing room and I'm playing and Steven Gerrard's your captain and he's training full on mm. every day, he's, he's going in the gym, he's looking after himself. Any new signing coming into that dressing room, yeah. the manager just goes, he doesn't even have to say yeah. it. It's just like, look at him. And to be honest, I, 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 obviously we, we all play for big football clubs and you'd always say that thing of player power. There was none of that at Liverpool. It was never that type of club where the players would sort of like, be, not, not be in charge of the right way, but it was almost like, maybe because we were local players, or certainly Stevie's point of view, you had so much, you'd come through the ranks as a young boy, you, you hadn't been brought in for a lot of money, you didn't have a, a massive ego. And it was just like you felt like you were playing for the club. Mm -hmm as opposed to maybe playing f for the manager. But I think it was really big having Stevie as captain for when new players come in, definitely. And you never got that feeling that anyone got out of the pram or got mm. too big for the boots at Liverpool. I don't know if it was different at your clubs, but we never felt felt that at Liverpool. Jill, what was it like for you? Obviously, you won a tournament a couple of years ago. Yeah. Where, where was the leadership in that? Dressing no, room? I think when you say about that, I think kind of them genuine connections are so important. Like, if you feel like it's genuine, like they're not just doing things to please the press or please the manager, it's like, I genuinely care about you. And then if you do that, you can bollock someone, but then you can also put an arm around them as well. So I felt like kind of as we went on, it was like the captain would put themselves aside for the good of the team. And I think that was like a really, really, big thing like I'm doing this for the good of the team if somebody was late or struggling like the captain would sometimes take the blame for it and try and protect them and I think if you do that as you say about give and take then you can bollock them if they're not working hard and stuff because the intent is genuine so I definitely agree with I, that. I, I think Roy what you're saying about the action I think you look at you look at um, Man City you know last season it was kind of Gundogan but in the main because like you said it's about action you look at that team as a team and any one of those lot could be captain the way that they play and the way they play, lead by example. I remember we, we were playing Wimbledon once and L L Tony was injured and Vinnie Jones was just shouting it continually. They are F all without Adams, they're nothing without Adams. And we was like, yeah, we'll show you. They beat us 3-1 because we didn't have Tony there. We felt like something weren't quite right. But then you look at someone like City, they've got so many people who are of that standard, of that, that level. You, you, you don't even, they don't even we need We had that at United, yeah. Gary. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I know people exaggerate my role at United. And because you don't need, you don't have, just because you're wearing the armband, mm -hmm. there was loads of brilliant lads in the United restaurant. Moving on to Arsenal, to your club writing about leadership. It's something that I felt was missing at the end of last season. Yeah. I thought it would be missing. And on Sunday, I'm commentating on the game. And it's an awkward one because I don't want, I don't, I don't like this idea of over-celebrating because you're suggesting players shouldn't show passion. Yeah. And we want players to show yeah. passion when they score a goal. And it's an North London derby, Saka scores the penalty. Mm -hmm. They're celebrating in the corner and Peter Drew is doing the commentary and I'm thinking, God, they've been there for about 30 seconds to a minute now. And yeah. I'm like, there's no one really grabbing them and thinking, I think this game's in danger. Declan mm -hmm. Rice has gone off yeah. and I'm thinking there's a bit of a problem there. And before actually the second goal goes in, which is only a minute later, I'm actually saying, I think they need to get back, I think they need to focus here. Is there an element of Arsenal that there is too much passion, too much emotion, not enough cold thinking, and actually the leadership just isn't quite right in there at the moment in terms of the maturity experience? It was a big goal, though, Gary, wasn't it? It was a big well, goal. Well, the, the thing is... That, and I know it's a fine yeah, line, this yeah, one. And I, yeah. I, I said no, it because I felt is, it, you know what I mean, in the stadium. Mm, you know what, if we're talking about over-celebrating, I don't even know what over-celebrating is. I understand what you're saying in the yeah. moment, but I think that Arsenal players, the inexperience may be... They, they stay there. Someone would be like having a word Maybe, with me. Someone yeah, would be saying, saying I think is, in a huddle, some, you'd be like, right, come on, make yeah, sure we're ready. This is something else I think that the players are probably going to have to learn as well. But 
I just think the pressure that they're under to try and stay with City and win those games, you know, you, I saw it like even last, when we scored that goal, Reese Nelson Bournemouth, you, the place is, I've never heard it like that because the fans are involved, they're invested in, we can't afford to lose these games. When, you, when you're scoring a goal in the last minute, it's like, oh, it's almost relief. I saw, you talk about Sheffield United and Tottenham. Tottenham at White Hart Lane. So if it's the last minute, I get it. No, 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 no. What I'm just saying, I'm talking about the celebrating yeah. and, and what is over celebrating. The fact is, it's joy in yeah. that moment. And for Arsenal fans, especially, <clears throat> knowing what we're trying to do in catching City and how important it is to win those games, yes, the fans are absolutely ecstatic. Yes, the players are celebrating because they feel like they're maybe getting a little bit closer to something. And then in the moment, like you, you rightly meant, they score a minute later, it's something they're going to have to learn. But I ain't got no... So that's why you, you switch back on. That's why you yeah. have to switch back. Again, you train all week to score a goal. That's what it's about. You don't, you don't celebrate that when you get a corner or someone... It's about scoring a goal. It's a derby game. So I have no issue if, even if they stay there for five minutes. Mm. The issue is when you come back mm. and you go, we've got to switch yeah, back on here. Yeah. And they lost possession, an experienced player lost possession and they got punished rightly so but they got punished last year at West Ham they got punished against Southampton that's a part of their playing kind of high risk football I know, but it's great rewards in, in the community shield and it, it, something stuck with me and I said I feel like I'm watching Arsenal in the running yeah. and it's only the start of the season yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know that thing where like you maybe the celebration or every game feels like it's going to the wild yeah, you can yeah. feel the yeah, but James don't you feel it's because it feel, yeah. Yeah. what happened with us with City last season but they have to start yeah. the season and, and I've been there with Liverpool where you mm. feel like Arsenal fans will feel like they can't win the league now because they've dropped uh, yeah. points yeah. in two that's home games be, yeah. that's yeah. what City do to you and we are probably looking at probably one of the best teams we've ever seen yeah. maybe the best mm. if they win the league again four times in a row Manchester City but I noticed in the Community Shield, it was Arsenal City. I remember Arteta on the side of the pitch after about 20 minutes. He was like a lunatic to the referee because he hadn't booked a City player. Right. And it's still a, half a friendly. I know it's the, the big rivalry. And I thought, that almost felt too intense mm. for the state. It's like, you've got another 10 months yeah. of this. And I feel like Arsenal, there's, because of last season being in such a great position, and they're not going to be in that position again in terms of, I think they, I think they won 50 points out the first 57 yeah. or something yeah. mad. And I think it's that much of missing out last season and they're that intense yeah. now. Is that coming That's from the manager, fun. Jamie? Is this the I manager and the bit. staff? 100%. Again, I wouldn't... I, I tell there's a lot of things I don't like, but obviously he's doing a good job there. But sometimes you do look at staff and you go, that is over the top. Yeah, yeah. he is that quite is over the top. And, you know, I think a manager coming up, but when there's 28 staff hugging each other yeah. and the, the bus driver and the chef are joining, you're going, yeah, hold on a second, right, it's it still comes down. Yeah. It still comes down to can... how much it means. I, I, only, I look at what it means and what they're trying to do. Yes, City have gone to another place. It took, Liverpool went to another place, but then Liverpool got there and it's almost not broken them, but they've had to come back, to, yeah. to yeah. Come yeah. back but, again. But, this but, is when, chasing but, City. But when are this Arsenal team going to mature so that actually they get the balance right yeah. between the emotion and passion and then the coldness and clinical element yeah. that you need. I mean, it's easy. I still do on the think, journey. No, I think you're right, because the England game you did at the Lionesses game mm. on Friday, and I remember watching and a goal got disallowed, and straight away Lucy Bronze is like, back in, back in, come on, like, let's get together. And she's not the captain, but I think you do have to have the right balance of the high emotion and the ones who are just like, <laughs> right, what's yeah. next? Yeah, but then let's the, get all but I'm always critical. I go the other way. I'm, I'm also then critical of teams who don't celebrate a goal. Oh, yeah, you we don't want that. You don't want that. Oh, no, you don't want that. Gary, you know, I know the weekend. I know you're just picking lines. But that is a derby game. I don't ever mm. remember when we played against Man City or if I was at Celtic against and you score. You are. It is, it is unbelievable. But again, the point is you're playing at a, you're playing a top level sport. You've got to be able to go, that's done. I mean, look, we switch we, back we, on. We, yeah. we, I suppose what we. Something what, we're going to have to learn. It, it does feel too emotional yeah. at this stage of the season, but only still in. September, October, it just, it does so long yeah, to go. I think that the, the, the desperation to, mm. to yeah. win and, and to do it is, we're seeing it. We're yeah. seeing it. But that's what the manager now. has to do his job. Exactly, what he might yeah, have again, to say, lads. Again, with the leadership group, with the, like, you're right. I'm not going to say that they shouldn't be, but I'm, you do need somebody to say, right, listen, brilliant. Yeah, like you say, yeah. celebrate for five minutes, but now switch back and on. That that's something we probably have to, have to learn as well. That doesn't always have to be the captain, neither. No, like, I bet you did that to Gerard a lot of the time. You mm. probably was helping him a lot, even Calm though you down, didn't have down. that arm. <laughs> 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 but there is, there's a few players like... Yeah, but ultimately, they gave away the goal, They gave away the goal because a midfielder was yeah. caught. Cool, yeah. Taking two or three touches. Yeah. yeah, that's what it came down to. Just last one on Arsenal, the goalkeeping situation. I've never seen it work. Two number ones uh, in my... 30 years of watching football. Can it work? Is, are, is he going to keep uh, Raya and Ramsdale happy? Is there such thing as two number ones? <coughs> no, this is what we're well, talking about. you're not there to keep the players happy, are you? Mm. No, my point is, 
is is this going to basically succeed this new you know thing? Something? No, go on, Jim, go on. no, no, that it, it, it can't. The only time you have two keepers of the same <laughs> ability in a football club is when they're both not good enough, and the manager doesn't. He's thinking, oh, is it this one? Is it that one? Because they're not good enough, and we've seen that before at clubs. But when you've got proper top class goalkeepers, and that's you know still remains to be seen whether the rare is that, but he. he for him to bring him in, he feels he's better than, than Ramsdale. So I'm totally with the manager. I think it's really ruthless. But I think if Arsenal are to but, but why is he? Why is he reluctant just to say, "I brought this guy in. He's my number one." He's got to keep Ramsdale he's still there. Ramsdale's not daft. He knows I what's know, happening. But he might he's go got to maybe just that keep him on a little hook, and he, he might play him in certain games now and again. Cup games, the FA Cup, they might qualify easily for the Champions League after three or four games and then he might put him in. He'll give him games here and there. But I think he's got to try and keep him on side a little bit for the training sessions every day to keep a sort of morale. And he has done well for him. I'm not massively... I think Adam Ramsey is a good goalkeeper. I don't think he's a great one. Raya has still got to prove himself as being a great goalkeeper. I think there's potential there to, to, to maybe take Arsenal to another level in the goalkeeping stakes. But, but no, you've got to remember as well, Ramsdale was in this position himself. On the flip side exactly. of it, he coming into Leno's place, yeah. mm. you know, and that was a bit like these are almost two number ones, and Leno had to go, so one of them will have to go, and it'll be <clears> Ramsdale. You know, the thing is, is that when you look at Aaron Ramsdale's journey into to, to Arsenal, when we were signing him, people were laughing at us. Yeah. Even some, uh, yeah, he surprised me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even some, even some Arsenal fans were saying, oh, he's had two relegations and that. Aaron Ramsdale's progressed to the point where he, he a lot of what we've achieved, he, yeah. he's, he's he's had a, he's played a major role in it. Now, you're right with Burnt Leno. Yeah, he came in and he, he took Burnt Leno's place. And seeing David Rea come in and play as well as he is, you know, it's, it's something that is always going to be contention every week now. What's happening? Like we saw, we saw with the, the sky cameras, cameras, every save is going to Ramsdale to the point where we see him yeah. and Jamie's, Jamie's, yeah. Jamie's done. Jamie, he's come for Jamie. Ja Aaron's dad's come for Jamie. Would you like to say sorry to <laughs> him? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but well, you know what? what? I've got no, just jumping in there, right? You, you've obviously got, you know, your lads played football. Yeah. I took. I, I would. Yeah. I never said nothing back. And, and you know what? I, in some ways, I admire it because if my son starts playing, I, yes, Jim. You, 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 your kids and you're watching it's them play. It's a completely different thing to being a pundit or being a fan. And when you see, so you know, I'm. Uh, is that your apology? Is that your apology? apology? Is that an apology? Yeah. Yeah. apology. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, is that all I'm saying is, <laughs> we want to see him get through this adversity. You know, Mikel Arteta has brought this in because, again. The margins, man. They get through what? Righty. He's just, he's to, just no, been the, left no, out of yeah. team. Yes, yes, but at the same time, you know, he's somebody that if you put yourself in Aaron Ramsdale's shoes, you, you know, probably when you start hearing that David Ray is coming, you think, oh yeah, okay. But then all of a sudden he's here. Mm -hmm. He's here, and he's not only here, but he's in the team. But that's so what you have now, yeah, right but, yes, it happens at professional level, but at the same, it doesn't make it. It doesn't. I'm not saying it's wrong because we're dealing with a professional game and it's ruthless and it feels very ruthless. You obviously know him and you like him, is that no, it? Absolutely Ramsdale's know him and I like him. Yeah, right. okay. I've been he a is, professional. He I've been is a, a professional. Great lad. I've been in a position where I've been in a position where you know someone's threatening. When Anelka came, I'm have you got his number in your phone? Ramsdale's. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Have you got his dad's? <laughs> What I'm saying is the way he's reacted, because the cameras would have been on him, whatever happens, we saw that. So if he was sulky and think, then we'd get a story out of that. The fact that he's clapping, we've got a story out of that. The main thing is, right, is that Aaron Ramsdale, he's going to back the team until we see what happens. Because what Mikel's doing, like we've all said, you don't really see this. He's going to have to knock on the door and say, look, we're going to have to see something. I need to play football up. somewhere else. He's yeah. going to have to, yeah. if it carries on like and this. He won't he... be the first or the last footballer to do that. Yeah. And he might move on in January. Do you think he'll be kept anything. happy though? I think he's a, a great lad. I don't think he'll be. I think he'll just be like, "This is the situation. He's come in. I'm going to have to fight." Who's for it, my why place. is everybody a great lad? I, is, that's all I hear is everyone's a great lad. No, he is. Yeah. He really is. He's but I think he'll just. I think <laughs> no, he'll no, you, just... Well, if you said you're not a great lad, <laughs> <laughs> if it's any consolation, I've never been called a great lad. You know <laughs> the thing is, is that people don't understand, like, and you know, being in that a dressing room, in a, in a dressing room where a team's trying to attain and they're trying to. Re trying to get somewhere, how ruthless that place yeah. is. You know what I mean? Of course, we feel, we, you feel sorry for him, but like Roy's, it's what happens. Yeah. Do you think like you should fix something if it's not broken, or do you think break it to take it to the next level? Because he's obviously yeah, but, broken. Yeah, because it wasn't obviously... broken, was it? Yeah, but you say it's not broken, but then you're looking at Mikel Arteta, who looks very meticulous in everything he's done. He's seen something. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's seen something. At the something. end of last season. Yeah. So, it, you know, and so you're thinking to yourself, games. and so he's, he's seen something to the point 
Yeah. He's brought in another look, goalkeeper. Look goalkeeper he wanted before. Look at the difference with Alisson coming in at Liverpool. Yeah. Look at the difference with Edison coming at Manchester. It completely yeah, changed, changed where those everything. clubs are going. Whether Ray is as good as them or he can get to that level, we'll see. But Mikel Arteta's got but to give him a chance. When Pep changed the top city, remember the goalkeepers? Yeah, yeah. Even after Hart, then yeah. even after that. Yeah, it was up, bro. How can you do that? He goes, no, just... Yeah. You know what, just get on with it. Let's move on to Chelsea. <laughs> so, Chelsea... Is it the chaos at the top or is it something that's in the dressing room that's the problem uh, at this moment in time? Or is it a combination of both? And Roy, just starting with you, you've always tried to stay clear of, I think, owners, talking about owners in football clubs and always put the responsibility on the dressing room if you can. But you've been a manager, you'll have had times where you've had challenges up above that's, yeah. that doesn't help. that's prevented you from doing your job yeah, properly. It certainly is doesn't. there an element of that? There can be. Without a doubt, without making excuses, yeah, that can affect... I suppose the dress room and the energy of your club and leadership, but you also when the players when that whistle goes. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd say from the dress room when you bring that amount of players together, mm -hmm. well I've never experienced it. It's oh, no. strange that I'm actually talking about it, but when you, I cannot <coughs> imagine. It's like when we were at a club. Sometimes three or four new players would come, and you could just see that it'll take them time to adapt. The players, from, from football point of view, off the field, their families, their schools. So again, how many have they bought over the last what? They've got 32 players. Is it, yes. they've brought, is it a billion quid or something? I, I can only imagine going to the training ground every day. I, I feel sorry for the kit, man. It must be, <laughs> no, it must be chaos. We've all been in successful teams. Yeah, you need top players, but you need a connection. Yeah. Yeah. In the dressing room, a connection with the manager, a yeah. connection with the crowd. And how can that ever happen at Chelsea? I just don't see it. The manager changes every two minutes. There's players coming in left, right and centre. There's probably two or three players for every position. And when you bring a player in, let, let's say, for instance, Mudruk, right? So, OK, we know he hasn't done well. He's cost 80-odd million quid. But they're still buying wingers left, right and centre. I'm thinking, you've got to give that lad a chance. You've got to say, you know, there's a path here to yeah. go and play. Yeah. So every player must feel like there's not a real opportunity mm. there for them because there's someone going to take the place two games later. And how would you build that sort of togetherness when you're in the trenches? you're going into games, you're up against it. That's what gets you over the line in games. And there's, there's, there can't be anything of a spirit or a connection at Chelsea from the top to the bottom. You know, when you, when you look at, like you mentioned about like what Chelsea and, you know, now all of a sudden the project's turned on its head. Remember when Chelsea was going through a phase where whoever the manager was coming, Chelsea are winning something every two years at least. Yeah. But now it's turned, it's completely flipped on its head to the point where we're just seeing all these young players come in you know what I mean? With, 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 uh, for a team that are expected to be amongst it, you know, expected to win things, expected to play well, um, with a manager that you're thinking he, he should be able to sort it out. Up to this point, I still haven't seen it. You know, when you look at someone like Ange Postacoglu, you know, he's coming in with five, six. We're seeing it. We're still not yeah. seeing it but with I, Chelsea. I, I, they can't but, be a team rated, or can they? Well, this is what I'm saying. Be, I think it's cultural. If you think, see what's happened at United and Chelsea, there's so many similarities. They're ruining players that have been signed as good players. Mm. Take Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire was wanted by Manchester City, mm. by the way. You know, these players that have been some come to United have been ruined, and coaches have been ruined. And it's happening at Chelsea over the last 12 to 18 months with Potter, with Lampard. Pochettino, we know, is a fantastic coach, but he's struggling at the start as well. Surely it comes culturally from the top. But Surely how long does it take as a manager? I remember when I first signed at Manchester City, we had a three-year plan to win the league. And it's like you have to go in, you have to change the culture, everyday standards, stuff like that. You probably don't even get most of the players that you want at the beginning. And I think, like, say, Lampard managers like that. How long should you give? them to build a culture and build a team because it's like They'll just take them out They'll have to give him time. 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 time Pochettino Jesus, has to have I'd time I'd to go into a job and go can I have a 10 year project <laughs> you know you, <laughs> Chelsea, listen whatever I say about Chelsea's project if he keeps losing football matches he will be under pressure they won't sack him this year no no, no maybe not this year not but there'll, there'll be pressure you building know, this, this is not against Chelsea but I, I think that the good thing to come out of it is that it tells you that just throwing lots of money at mm, something does not matter the way there's still got to be a plan there's got to be a structure who you're bringing it in, who's playing with who, who's mixing with who. Just to just throw that much money at it. And I, I mean, listen. Has it ever worked? Has it ever worked? No, but There's I mean, never listen. Been an example the, of the, this, the best teams will normally spend the most money. Mm. I get that. But the way Chelsea have done it, spending so much in the last 12 months, and, you know, for Todd Bowley to come over, it almost feels like he's come over and gone, we'll just yeah. do this and everything will be okay. And it's like, yeah. no, it's I think the longer it goes on, it. especially we haven't mentioned the length of the contracts. Can you imagine a player, a mm. young player, looking at that team, eight year deal? He doesn't even know if he's going to get a chance. What's his mentality? What's his, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's his drive? Yeah. 
You know, how do you get up to try and play? How do you get your 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 yeah. energy? It's and like, like a it, solid like spine yeah. to the team as well. Like you have them players that are seven, eight out of ten every single mm, week. The superstars yeah. you bring in, you might get a ten out of ten or a three out of ten, but they need to build about the structure. spine. They still need a goalie. They still need a centre back, yeah. and they still need, they need a centre forward. And they spent a billion. But besides that, they're not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good point to have a half time break, and our half time break is a little Super Six predict competition between me and you, Roy, and Cara Young. To help me out and Jill oh. and Ryder, you're going to help okay. your mate okay. out Roy over there. So let's bring this, uh, Ben. What was that? Oh, here we go. Oh, here we Our go. man. Nice one. He doesn't need any help. He loves this. He, he can't lose against me on this. Nice one, Ben. It's our Super Six section where we predict the results of six Premier League matches. It's me versus Roy with a little help from our friends. And here are the rules. It's five points for predicting the correct scoreline and two points for predicting the correct result. It's going to be competitive, and remember, you can win £250,000 if you guess all six score lines correctly. Right, let's have a look at our scoreboard on week one. I'm going to go first, Wolves and Man City. I'm going to go Manchester City 2, Wolves 0. No. Mm, I can't see them scoring. I'll go more, Roy. To, okay. Higher, higher. <laughs> <laughs> um... I've said you got a European. I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to get too heavy. Do you want it to be quick? Just yeah. No, have a think about it. No, I've got a European helping, game next week. Helping, Jill. What, what are you team going to do this weekend? Even if I reckon does, they'll score about more. City, what are you talking about? If they go 2 0 up, then they'll be, they won't go for 3 or 4. Pep will just be happy to take it easy. So. Yeah, but then suppose Haaland, has, suppose Haaland has one of those crazy five minutes and scores yeah. six goals. <laughs> so what are you saying? We got two, I'm going 3 4 here. Yeah. yeah. And 3 3 0. Mm. Could Wolves score one? No. City is too good defensively. You think so? No, no, no. no. You three haven't nil. got Rodri. Yeah. It's like... It's a big oh, he's hit it now, though. Right, Roy, you're on. <laughs> Arsenal, Bournemouth. <laughs> Bournemouth, Arsenal, the next one. You're oh. first on this one. Ooh. I'll go... Again, 3-1. I think they'll concede. 3-1? Yeah. 3-1. Well, it's 3-3. I've got... No, obviously, no, uh, you know what? No. As long as I win, win. No no win. There's no leadership. There's no leadership I'd be there. I'd be very surprised if Bournemouth <laughs> scored from... We've just been drawn together, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> no stability <laughs> here. Sorry, sorry. Says sorry. Yeah, ladies, I would probably... I'd probably say 3-0. I think Arsenal are going to... Okay. Not going to concede, but like... I was thinking they could give away a penalty. All right, then we'll go 3-1. 3-1. 3-1. I was trying Yeah, but then Ramsdale will save it. From the bench. 3-1. Sorry. Carol, where we at? 2-0? Yeah, we'll go 2-0 again. Yeah, 2-0 to us. Yeah. Nil. yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Jesus. Up until, up until the weekend, we're, we're, they'd, had the, they'd had, the, I think, only 10 shots. Oh, the thing is, it's the big chance. Oh, yeah, you're going to have the Who's the referee? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're not taking the big chances. That's our problem. Yeah. Right, United, oh, Crystal Palace. United. Oh, oh, I'm going oh, Palace. Away team. win. You're, 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 don't go against Raw, you buddy. I'm going for a home win. I think Palace will score. You don't say, Gary, do you? Two one, just it gets over the so line. serious yeah. when you're talking. Two one, just over the line. line. Sancho two comes one. on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sancho Sancho I apologise at half time on the pitch. <laughs> Alice, I want Palace always calls them problems. Yeah, yeah. Palace will score. I think Palace will score, but I think United. United at home. Mm. Three one, United. Wow. Really? Oof. You're thinking two one, aren't you? That's the problem. I could see Palace scoring I'm more than one I'm thinking that goal. could be a draw. Three two, could it be a mad three two? Uh, Gaps everywhere at the back. Yeah. 3-2, oh, we got a bit mad. Go you need one mad. Yeah, go on. 3-2. 3-2, three, two. Three, two. Three, two. that'll bring the crowd. I'd have gone 3-2. That five. whispering, look at them whispering. <laughs> <laughs> what are you supporting? What are you doing? I'd go 3-2, 3-2, three, three, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Get on three, with it. United. Go on. Yeah, we need to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Newcastle, West Ham. Wow, that's a good... That's, that's us, you. Yeah, that's us. That's you. That's us. Is that the tune? That's Burnley, by the way. Oh, is it? <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> playing Sunday. Um, Newcastle. You know what? Newcastle. Goals. Newcastle. Newcastle are in a good Newcastle, place. Yeah, Could it be? I, I like the so, oh. three one. I like three one. No, no, no. no I obviously, think, give chance a team. I, I, I think Newcastle. They won't concede. It's a nil that game. Line. I think uh, Newcastle. Two or three nil. Well, two or three nil. I watched Burnley the other game. United. We go. I think they'll we go, get goals. I'm going to probably go three nil. Are we going for, are They've got a Champions League for? game. They'd be thinking. To, yeah, you know what I mean. You're going in manager mode. Two nil. Two nil. Two nil. I think Newcastle. I'm doing this game. Are you, are you, are you doing this game? Newcastle at home. They've just beaten oh, Sheffield yeah. 8 0. Are you doing uh, Tottenham well, Liverpool? This is a Tottenham big Liverpool. one. Oh, here we go. You, you know, I'm doing that one. I'm doing Tottenham oh, Liverpool. Oh, what a great I game. I guarantee you, they're going to go. I'm saying 1 1. 1 1, Carrot. He's got. Yeah. Yeah. Full backs mentality. Yeah, 1 1. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> nice journey back on the bus, a bit of pasta, yeah. Everyone's happy. Four, three, Another one one. The one we oh, home. You Let's just go said four, three, he's going to go one one. Uh, one one. Good. Absolutely one one. You're going one one. One one. He used to be happy oh, with the one one. Someone's winning that. Someone's one one. Winning. Yeah. Yeah. Go all the way. Someone's going to win that. I'm telling you. Oh, go on then. That could be Desmond. I feel like you get dedicated for the big two, games two. in the like nil nil. I think Liverpool win this one. Okay. West Ham had West Ham had a few chances, mm. there, didn't it? Yeah. Liverpool give up a lot of chances. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? You're going to... Two, two. Two, go on two, two. Come on. Two, two. I'll overrule you. Go on. Sorry. You've got all the others. I no, had to I pick one myself. Forest Brent Forest. Oh, awkward one. one. Forest, I'm going to go Forest at home. 3-1. Three, 3-1 one. Three, one to Forest. Ooh. Ooh. We're loving the three. He is. Yeah. Do you think John Robertson's playing? 2-1. 2-1. 2-1 Brentford. Forest. Forest. No, no, 2-1 Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not with him on this one. I'm, I, just, I don't know. I've jumped ship. It's I've done a Sancho. I'm on my own with this one. You've got a backup. Brentford would score. 2-2. Brentford would score. 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 Let's get stuck into this second half where we've got some of our uh, overlap communities questions right. and some good ones here. <laughs> so, first one, what was the last concert you went to? Oh. Billy Joel. New York, two weeks ago. Absolutely you went to New York? Amazing. Wow. wow. Ooh, did you go all the yeah. way yeah, yeah. to watch Billy Joel? Yes, I did, Jill, yes. You live a good life. I do, I live a great life. I'm the luckiest man. <laughs> 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 I went to see New York Jets, Billy Joel, and a bit of the tennis. Beautiful, Lovely. Nice. Was you singing along? Does anybody bother? No, you? But... Is anyone singing too loud? Do you wear a yeah, cap? Do you talk to me through your concert? Not, or... not in New York. No. You still get a few Irish and United fans, but no. no right. I didn't have a cap on. You're not here wearing a cap. He turned up at my coffee shop in a cap. Did I have a cap on? And asked on? for an Earl Grey tea, and I was making the drinks, and I was like, who's this boring bastard? <laughs> <laughs> No wonder you're driving a G-Wagon to charge us. I'll have to use my 12 quid and win him shot. I got a quid, don't you, in 12 quid? I'm like, I'm Jesus. Jesus. Quid? I was in London. I was in 12, 12 quid. quid. <laughs> Jesus. Um, you give him a free... You should have been wearing a balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> I give him a free one. No, you did not. I did. Uh, I don't writing know concert. Uh, you know what? I, I went to... A, a, I was really privileged <laughs> to go to a, a, a group called Ezra Collective. Jazz group, um, and I went to their recording of. I knew you'd be a bit heavy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah in the car. Yeah, no yeah. Where was this? Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie yeah. Sean, No, they was filming in Abbey in Abbey Abbey Road Studios. Which, oh, yeah. a little private oh, gig oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. And they are amazing. Ezra Collective, check them out, man. Okay. Unbelievable jazz band. So I went and saw them Ezra the other day. Are they on your phone? Are they on your phone? No, I didn't. No, you know. No, they're not on my phone. Not everyone's on my phone, but they, they were, they're amazing. They're on the way. And they won the Mercury Prize the other day. They're a brilliant group. Uh, I'm Bruce Springsteen, High Park. Yeah? Yeah, it was unbelievable. You got emotional, didn't you? Oh, it was unbelievable. Three hours. I was it good? I was there as well, yeah. I was Do you like sing along, girl? Do you sing along, girl? Pardon? Do you sing along, like... A little bit, yeah. Because it's just, like, I feel like my child, the first album I ever bought was Bruce Springsteen, wow. born in the USA, so a little bit emotional. Nice one. Why are you getting emotional for? Yeah. It's just no, truthfully. A couple. Are you drunk? It just brings you back. <laughs> Why did you get emotional? I had a few Peronis that night. All right. Yeah. yeah. 15. <laughs> <laughs> Cara concert. Hey. Elton John, Glastonbury. Wow. Oh, oh it's in there. Yeah. Was it good? Oh, it's it's the, uh, just great, isn't it? Brilliant. Was there a drink then? involved? Yeah. 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 Shrooms <laughs> in here. <laughs> you had a little go and crash me, I see. I, I, I think it'd be a pure street, that. I'm not, it's not for me. No. It's no, for jazz, Andrew. My missus loves it. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it, but some of the time... I'm, I'm hearing so many good things on some of the smaller stages that I'm going to probably... It feels like too many people for me. I'd like, yeah. I think, it does feel like that. I think it'd be impossible for you, I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'd try. Yeah. Yeah. And even with the beard and Unless, the baseball yeah. cap. It looks out. <laughs> Jill, out last concert... The tickets you're... are expensive, though, aren't they? I You'd be all right with that coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just set a little coffee stop show. Uh, well, it wasn't New York, it was the Etihad Stadium, Ed Sheeran. Yeah, oh, wow. brilliant. He's so Ed, good. Yeah, it is amazing. Like, it's it's overrated. It. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Actually. It's overrated. Now I've what? gone, the like, you know. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. He's overrated. <laughs> He's overrated. <laughs> what, Ed Sheeran? Yes, yeah, shut up. Oh, my God. He really is. Get out of order saying that about Ed. I'm not having that. Right, this is a question for you, Jill. And yeah. it's basically, out of us four, <laughs> start two, bench one, drop one. Oh, oh, Jesus, God. that's really... A... Jesus, Jill. God, I, mean, I can't do that. There's only one striker here, Jill. You need goals. Where? 
<laughs> I'll have to start, Roy, because I'm so scared of them. <laughs> oh, no, you have to <laughs> charge me 12 pounds for a cup of tea, yeah. Why's he being in a team because you scare people? I know, yeah. Sad, isn't it? <laughs> this is actually really it's difficult. It's not, Jill. Who else is starting? Be start ruthless. Two? Like, start a, like two. a Premier yeah. League okay, manager. I, I, I need goals, so I've got, I do course, have to go yeah. for righty. And Roy can feed him. Yeah. Like, this is his last stage. It's, it's, if we're a team, like, if we could turn around the bush, yes, if we could turn around the bush, yes, what was it, Ben? You know what I'm saying? You've got to sell me one of like, us or bench um, one of us. Oh God. I think you'd but you'd probably have had a bit more of an attitude, so I'd have had to drop you and then bench oh, 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 you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting sold. <laughs> no, just, no, you're not getting sold. You can just trim with trim the reserves. Trim with the reserves. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Serious question here. Right. Why would women have any faith in the game to deal with major issues like Mason Greenwood, Anthony, and Luis Robiales? I'll come to you first, Jill. Um, no, I think obviously the Spanish FA one has been a difficult one when you look at the girls at the World Cup who got selected mm. and then they opted not to go to the World Cup. Mm. I'm like, that blows my mind how bad kind of the game was at the time and where it was at and them issues because I think for them not to go and represent their country on a world them, stage, yeah, but then yeah. there was three that three. didn't go. Mapping and I think that's how yeah, bad Patrick, yeah. yeah, that's and how Pina, bad it was. Pina, yeah, it was terrible. And I think like for them to then go and kind of speak about them issues and not get resolved, then you do lose faith in it because I think that is your dream to go and play yeah. in a World Cup so yeah obviously they went on to win it and it was great but then it totally got overshadowed by all the issues and I think they are starting to get resolved now but yeah you do lose faith in it a lot I suppose in in that sense and yeah it's just kind of sad that the World Cup was overshadowed by all that I think one of the one of the good things about it Jill what's come out of it is the is the global um, yeah. condemnation of it yeah because if that doesn't happen, just imagine if Ruby Alice doesn't do that to Jenny Omosa yeah. Then everything what was what's happened and what's happened, why why might we say Mappy Leon and Claudia Pina and, and Patrick Guerra, why they weren't there at all is because of the stuff they were talking about, what was going on before. Yeah. So if he doesn't do that, then we're not able to even put a light on this. It just carries on. Yeah. And that is why it's so important that the global um, attention that this got has changed that. And it has to continue to change because I believe that even though we've got the new manager, is it Tommy, the ladies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I still think that Vilda has got tentacles in that dressing room. There's still reason why Mappy Leon's not gone back. You know, it's the same with um, Giro. They've, she's, not, she's not gone back. They went, they had to report and then they left again because it's still and kind the, of the same. There's still a lot the, going on the there. The male players spoke out, which was great, yeah. but it's like, why does it have to take the male players to speak yeah. out for them people to listen when they were telling them what was going All on before? And like, don't get us wrong, I think it's great that the players back them and voice their opinions, but why don't women get heard in the first place? Unfortunately, like Jill said, that you do need, we do need more vocal men because when, when, when they do speak, they, people listen. Because otherwise, why wouldn't people be listening to the women now? If, yeah. that, if they could get something done, then you wouldn't need the vocal men. But there's, there's people we just need to call things out. Well, a big problem, and it will not get resolved until there is proper leadership Absolutely. in the game. And final question, uh, it's what's your biggest defeat and how did you recover? That comes off the back of Newcastle, Sheffield mm -hmm. United at the, at the uh, mm -hmm. weekend. And mine was obviously Valencia. Wow. I'd ever lost 7-0 as a player. I bought lost seven nil in uh, Barcelona. Messi, Suarez, Neymar. But does that, yeah, that kind does of that like, make it a bit easier? That, they were that brilliant. A bit, yeah. Just something that last twenty minutes of that game felt like about three days. But did it stop? Did it, when was the last goal? <laughs> no, 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 they, no, they, they carried, kept they going. Carried on. They carried on. They were brutal. You were there. I was in the stand watching it, cheering. <laughs> <laughs> I was interviewing Suarez the next day. Yeah. And I was in the press conference. That that was brutal. Oh, if conference. you ever want to put that press conference on, Gary Neville. Uh, press conference after the Valencia Barcelona game it was brutal wow. every question was when are you going to leave when oh, are you going to oh. resign I do you know what you're doing do you know what you're doing <laughs> Like, oh, really? No. <laughs> were the players in there? That was that <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty harsh, I think. Oh, it was harsh. It's Barcelona. And oh. they do that to... We had a man sent off after 25 minutes as well. But it was 4-0 then, wasn't it? <laughs> no one mentions that. <laughs> no, it was 2-0 at that time, but I didn't recover. I mean, that literally was the end for me. I, was, I think 10 days later I was sacked, two weeks later I was sacked. Game over. It's worse when you're a coach. Oh, it's worse when you're a coach. Think, um, Is it? Yeah, definitely oh, worse when you're a coach. Oh. You just feel ill. I, 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 I'd never felt as bad in my life. I, I remember um, it was my first first year in the in the in, in the league, first division with, with Liverpool, and it was the great Liverpool. Nine nil. Oh, nine -nil. For real? Nine -nil. you didn't score. Nine -nil for Palace. Palace. You did, get, did you have a chance? Right? Did you have a chance? Yeah, I didn't have a chance. No no. chance. And, we, and we missed the penalty at six nil. Jeff Thomas wouldn't let me even that take that. Like, the that thing with change. that was, 
is that I remember when we came up, because we came out of the second division and the first, the first um, fixture I looked for was Liverpool because I, just, I was just desperate to play at Anfield. Yeah. Desperate to play at Anfield. Right. And, um, <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't keep laughing. <laughs> it's, not it's not funny. It's not funny because I'm, tra I'm traumatised still. <laughs> you got but like, you know something? It was, when I, I watched the Sheffield United and, um, and, and Newcastle the other day, we weren't like that. We weren't all over the place, spaces everywhere. We were tight <laughs> on people, we were tight, close and that. Low they... block, did you have a low block? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't invented yet. <laughs> we didn't know whatever it was called, we didn't do it. We tried to, we tried to play against them and I'm not joking and I, I say it now and I, I remember it as if it was yesterday because the, the DVD came out literally the next day. <laughs> but watching the, those top players, especially obviously coming out second, just pass around us and finish ruthlessly and that was it was unbelievable. I remember I was crying at about 7 nil. Tears just started to come off. <laughs> but I remember the week after... This is a great story. I love this. <laughs> the week after you was one... Bruce of me. <laughs> 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 the week after was one of the most... Um, I don't know. One of, for, for Crystal Palace and the way we dealt with the week after... Because obviously, remember, we beat Liverpool 4-3 in the semi-finals yeah, yeah. later that season. It's how you Steve react, Cop right? Steve Koppel was unbelievable. React. Steve Koppel was unbelievable in the way we watched it back. He let us see how good Liverpool were and what we have to do to try and stay with a team like that. We could not do any more. Yeah. And it really made us feel better. I think we drew the next game, then we started It's to all the reaction. It's exactly. Funny, we yeah. lost, this, when I was manager of Sunderland, we lost Everton. I think it was A2. Wow. Yeah, A2. It could have been 26, I swear. <laughs> Why did you have to pick that one? No, because it it's, it's all about the reaction afterwards. It's what your team do. And we yeah. won the following weekend. Which what did you say in the dressing room after that game? What was your reaction? You're all rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the reserves next week. No. No, I think what you be, again, you were on about, yeah, I think I didn't eat properly for a few days. I didn't go to the training ground, wow. definitely till about the tours. Yeah. You're just in shock. Mm. David Moyes was brilliant after the game, I have to say. Obviously, he had a nice balance with him afterwards. He wasn't smug with me. But the key was, after the game, your message to all the players when I eventually turned up for work, was what you do, how you react to it. Yeah. And we did win the following weekend. I remember playing for Everton years ago now, so it was when the game wasn't even, like part-time or whatever, but they paid for us to stay down because we were playing Arsenal on the Thursday and the Sunday. And I remember we got absolutely smashed 5-0. And when you were playing them again on the Sunday with the same players, everything else, and I was like, how are we going to do any better? And I think it was 6-0 on the Sunday. And I was about <laughs> 23. I sat on that pitch at Marine and I contemplated retirement. Someone ran on to give us an asthma pump because I was absolutely <laughs> knackered. I'd been playing midfield, just chasing shadows the whole game, but that was a really really difficult weekend because how do you change in two days? You've know, got the same is, squad. Yeah. I've never seen that. It was, yeah, it was, that was difficult. James, I, I, I was never on the back of like a, a sort of six or seven one, but I remember one, you used to probably playing. Used, we, we had a man sent off after about a minute at Old Trafford. What year was that? Can you remember? It was Sammy Ippy who got sent off, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I played. Do you play? And it's that thing of playing your biggest rivals, you're away, it's a tough yeah. game anyway. And just that whole belief. It's the game shock of like the first game getting a man sent off straight away. Yeah. yeah. One nil down, and you've just got another 90 to go. And, just, and you can't say, but you, you know the game's almost you virtually the feeling, gone, yeah. and, but you've still got to play a full game. It's yeah. not even you got sent off after half an hour. It's just like, and that was just like, just almost like a training session where mm. you're just thinking, just blow the switch and just get <laughs> yeah, this ball yeah. just over, just and it's just like there, and it's Old Trafford, and you're getting a bit of verbal. And, yeah. you know, like, oh, just what a great place to finish the first episode. <laughs> uh, a great place to finish the first episode of <laughs> Stick to Football. Fall, Liverpool, nil. <laughs> nice. So that is the end of the first episode of Stick to Football, brought to you by Skybet. Thank you, Wrighty, Roy, Jill, Cara, and we'll uh, see you again next week. Nice one, man.